The, the Prime Minister is warning if we go back to the climate wars and ditch the 2030 target, it would make Australia an international prior on the world stage. You're not worried about that at all? Is it worth sacrificing our international standing, as the Prime Minister is saying? Well, look, I've just gone through for you there. I mean, we're actually... The, the, we're, we're, the, the Prime Minister is the international pariah. Uh, the Prime Minister's crazy uh, attempt to get to 82% renewable energy, that's the international pariah. pariah. No other country in the world is really trying this. I but mean, New no Zealand in, also, the New, but, New Zealand government But has no other away. country has watered down its 2030 targets. Would that be a victory for you if Australia was the first to do it? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, in life it's what people do is a lot more important than what people say. I mean, our problem is we, we often as a country try and do what we say, which I think is an admirable trait, uh, but it's clear that no other country is doing it. I mean, Germany have been reopening coal-fired power stations. Uh, the UK is searching for oil again uh, in the North Sea. Uh, as I said, the United States is drilling oil like it's going out of fashion. And of course, then you come to our part of the world, most relevant for us, where China's building two coal-fired power stations a week. India just hit a record amount of coal mining uh, in their country, smashing expectations there. Uh, I mean, we are out of step here with the rest of the world. And that's why our economy is weakening. weakening. That's why people's standard of living has gone back uh, to a level not seen since 2011. I mean, that's why people are struggling here. That's why the Prime Minister is struggling in the polls, because people's living standards have dropped by more than a decade under these net zero policies. It's time to change tack and, uh, and prioritise the strength of our economy and, and therefore the health, health of uh, Australian families' budgets. Senator, there's been a lot of concern about China's influence in our region and across the Pacific Islands, including from the Coalition. Are we risking pushing them away and even further towards China more by ditching the 2030 target? I mean, I just said, I mean, I don't see how this is a coherent argument because China is building two coal-fired power stations a week. They installed last year more than 100 gigawatts of coal-fired power, more than five times the coal-fired power we have in Australia. They just saw that in just one year. So in what logical world would us just... Maybe, maybe we just build a couple, like they can build a hundred odd and we'll just build a couple uh, and then suddenly apparently those Pacific Islands will rush into the arms of the country building a hundred coal-fired power stations because they're concerned about climate change. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, I mean, we, we, have to, we have to have the ability as our country to decide what's best for our nation, just like any other proud nation in the world. And this ridiculous Paris Agreement, the, the argument of the government right now is we can't change... No, you can't change. The voters can't change. The Australian voters can't change our climate change targets in 2030 because of an international agreement we signed in 2015 says you can't do that. Well, I actually think the Australian people are sovereign in this country, not international organisations like the United Nations. They get to have a say. And so there should be a choice and a competition and an election and let Australian voters decide what should happen in this country.